I swear. Why you got eight on a Facebook? Facebook. I don't know what just happened. Why is it doing that? I don't know. I've done it from up there. Well, over here it was just closing it. See? Facebook. It's glitching out. Just keep commenting for me, Cody. The update failed. Are you done? Are you done? Are you done? Try one more time. That's the wrong person. Ah! I told you. Facebook is absolutely terrible. I have an idea, though. It's going to be the weirdest way we've ever done this, but we can't do it this way. And then I'm going to show them you guys, so. Hey. Hi! All right, so we're still live. We're going to try it this way, I guess. <laughs> because Facebook doesn't want us to be great. So we're just going to kind of show you guys, you to them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Actually, that kind of works because he can still see us here and they can see him. There we go. Sort of. It works. <laughs> Dude, it, this has been some of the worst shit ever. <laughs> Every time we try to go live, it, it usually works out pretty good, but I don't know what the hell's going on tonight. <laughs> it was like every time your little bubble would come up on the screen and they would just shut back down. Every time. <laughs> so so, uh, so what's new with you guys? What, what, what you got going on with American Overdose right now? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to multitask. I'm trying to talk and trying to uh, share the video. Oh, you're good. Get some more, uh, but um, right now what we're doing is we are writing a new album. Uh, so we're writing and recording. Uh, we're putting together the live show, working on new images and, and what have you. Um, we have a ton of songs that we're just kind of demoing and messing around with, trying different things. Um, and preparing for next year, because hopefully next year we can do a little bit more touring. Uh, we got announced to play uh, Metal in the Mountains out in uh, West Virginia. Um, I think it's a two or three day festival. So uh, I'm, I'm, we're really excited about that, man. We're just we're, we're excited to come out with some new music and the new stuff that we're writing. It's just fucking, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Awesome, awesome. Uh, have you guys been doing any touring lately? Or are you just working on the album slowly right now? Well, we did, uh, we did go tour. Uh, we did a, a, a month long tour in July. Uh, we got to play Rockfest with uh, Disturbed, Godsmack, and uh, Cedar, and a bunch of other bands out in uh, out in Wisconsin. And then we got to play the War Tour out in uh, in Utah. So we what we did basically did was we got invited to play those festivals. We ended up uh, just making a tour of it, and we went out all, as far as Ohio, uh, went through a bunch of different states: Colorado, uh, Texas. Uh, Iowa, Illinois, just pretty much everywhere that we could go, and uh, took advantage of us getting able to play that the, the, the 
to festivals and just made a tour of it. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. (laughs) I was actually telling, I don't know if you were in here earlier, whenever I was telling the story of finding out about you guys with that whole little OTEP debacle. (laughs) And, uh, um, but just so some of our viewers know, how long have you guys been around? So we've been a band, I started the band in 2009. Um, it was a project that I have been wanting to do for a long time. It was just a matter of finding the people that saw my vision and and heard what I was hearing and and wanted to put it together. But basically, uh, I ended up finding human. And he was, I mean, he's been doing producing for years and, uh, I found him, I told him my, my ideas and basically me and him just wrote a ton of music. And then we ended up finding uh, Brick through the MySpace days. And <laughs> he came out, uh, started playing drums for us. I got my brother involved. Uh, and we've gone through a number of bass players and guitar players between now and then. Uh, but right now, you know, it feels right. Like everything we have together is just, it's flowing really well. And, um, you know, it's been, it's been a lot of work, but it's been a dream come true. It's, it's a lot of highs and lows that we've had. And, uh, I mean, as, as low as we've been sometimes, the highs have just overcame that. And, and we've, we've overcome a lot of hurdles uh, in our career. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what the future, the future holds for us. That's awesome. That's awesome. Are you guys currently on a record label, or are you still independent? Dude, we've been independent since the beginning. Uh, and we haven't had any record labels. Uh, we've done everything pretty much ourselves, with the exception of a few friends that have helped us out and guided us and introduced us to some people. Uh, but it's been all done in house, man. It's been uh, the band funds itself, all the merch that we've we've made, we've been from us putting money into it and selling the merch and using the merch to to invest into PR, invest into ads, invest into uh, instruments, lights, uh, touring bands, and everything pretty much. Uh, Bions, we had to do a Bion tour with with Mushroom Head in 2015, um, but uh, it paid back tenfold with us when we did that tour because. We gained a lot of fans and got a lot of exposure in front of, you know, 500 to 2,000 people a night. So, that's amazing. Oh, yeah, that's that's well a big... <laughs> that, that's definitely a big thing with those, with those buy-on tours. Like, uh, we, we're really, really, really good friends with the band Raven Black. I don't know if you know who they are. Very familiar with them, yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, we've never played with them or anything like that, but we are very familiar with them. They've gotten them, they, they've promoted a lot, so we, we hear a lot about them. Yeah, then they're in that same spot, you know. She she actually told last time we we talked to her, which wasn't to I guess we talked to her on Tuesday. She was like, uh, you know, who are you guys interviewing this week? And we're like American Overdose. She's like, oh my god, I love them. <laughs> we, we 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 want to play. We want to play. They want to play with you guys so bad they can't stand it. We've talked about we've talked about playing shows, and I think uh, my brother's been in contact with some of the members of that band. And that would be fucking killer because I know they put on a, a killer show from what I've heard. Oh yeah. And uh, you know what? What better? What better to play with than other other bands that put on a show as well? You know, the, the fans. Uh, the, the, you know, share fans and people. People come and see something. See something crazy and different. <laughs> oh yeah, they're, they're definitely awesome. We actually met up with them in uh, when we were we were doing a tour back in October, and we met up with them uh, when they were playing with Ginger and Devil Driver, and uh, crossed paths with them in Oklahoma. We had a blast at their show. It was amazing. That is badass that they got on that tour, man. I saw I saw the announcement for that. I'm like, man, they're gonna, they're gonna be playing in front of so many different fucking people that they're gonna get so much exposure. That those tours really is, is really the key. Uh, I know a lot of people shit on buy-ons and whatnot, talk shit about it, but that's just kind of where the industry is right now. It, it, some sometimes you just have to do that, and it's there's no there's no shame in doing that. We did it, and you know, it, it's smart. It's better to, it's better to go out on tour with the bands they're gonna bring. Uh, a crowd that you can be exposed to and, 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 and gain some fans from that versus going out on your own where you're taking a huge risk and you may play in front of, you know, one one or two people or you may play in front of, you know, 100 or 200 people. But you know when you're going on tour with a big band like Devil Driver or Ginger and them that you're going to have an audience so you don't have to worry about uh, playing in front of an empty house. You're going to sell merch. You're going to you know, gain new audiences and all that. So it's, it's definitely the smart, smart move to do. You see, I kind I kind of feel like doing those buy on tours is kind of like buying, you know, a PR or a billboard spot on a you know major highway. You kind of have to look at it, it like that. It is definitely well worth it, and I encourage all, all, all the bands to do that. I mean, it's good to get out there by yourself and do it on your own, so you can kind of get a, a feel for it. We've done it before, and uh, you know, we've had our, our good shows, we've had our bad shows. Uh, but it's it's a good experience. So you can see that you know it, it is a it is a lot of hard work. And you know when you play in front of five people or ten people, it really sucks. You know you're unloading, you're getting ready for the show. You pour your heart and heart out there, 
how many people get to brag about how they toured across the country and, and you know played in front of people and, and have an audience and have people that they've never met know about their music and it affects their lives about that. So, oh yeah, um, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Um, so for any for any upcoming musicians that might be in here, what is your best advice to, to give to the upcoming bands? I would say keep playing, um, make as many friends as you can, um, be original, you know, learn from learn from the mistakes. Uh, don't let uh, the negativity get to you. Uh, use it as fuel for you know as fuel to. to Make your passion and your determination that much more uh, more uh, inflamed and fucking don't stop, man. Just keep promoting, keep promoting, keep promoting. Hard work does pay off. Uh, keep at it. You know, you're going to have fans out there and it's going to get out there eventually. It's, it's, it is a lot of hard work, but that's what separates the weekend warriors from the people that do this for, for many years. Definitely, definitely. Well, dude, we appreciate you coming on. We know we you got to go pick up somebody from the airport. Yeah, man. Uh, I, I, I'm so very thankful that you guys had me on here. Uh, I wanted to congratulate you guys. I heard you guys had uh, you guys just got engaged. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations on that. Thank um, you very much. I'm for you guys, and I'm excited for you guys. I wanted to give a shout out to John Mercy, the one that uh, I think pushed this on to you guys and yeah. to get on the show and. I know he's getting going through uh, surgery right now. He came out and saw us at uh, we were on tour, and uh, he didn't get to see us live because he, he had just gotten uh, done with surgery. But he still made an effort to be out there waiting for us in the sun. He's in a wheelchair. We took pictures with him, and we, we signed some posters for him, hooked him up with some shit. Uh, uh, that it was it was mind blowing to see that we had someone waiting out there for us in the beating sun and all that. Fucking, we were just so yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, he's an he, he's awesome. He he's been an awesome dude. He's been a fan of Oz for a long time. He's been with us ever since the beginning. That is fucking awesome. It, it's cool when you have people like that, man, because those are the people that are gonna stick with you through the, through the highs and lows. And uh, I mean, your fans become your friends and, and over time. Like I I always say, like it's it's weird for me to call people uh, fans because it's it's just a weird word for me to say. I consider. Yeah. All our supporters as friends. Like we go out, yeah. and we take shots with them, we drink with them, we hang out with them, we make memories, and, and uh, it's just a big fucking culture and a family and fucking bonding and friendships and all that. So hell yeah, uh, we're very thankful for everything. Every every single person that has been behind us from day one, you know, from the very beginning to you know the newest people that, that care about us, no spread the word about us. We've been very lucky that the word of mouth has been very, 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 uh, very helpful for American over just to get out there to people's faces. And, and, uh, you know, it's, it's never just the band itself that's doing all the work. It's, you know, it's everyone involved, the promoters, the other bands that promote the shows and sell tickets for you uh, when you're coming through. Uh, you know, the radios, the, the podcasts, uh, you guys doing shows like this and exposing us to people. It's, it's, you know, it takes a lot to break out a band, and especially when you're doing it on an independent level where you don't have a record label that's dumping millions of dollars at you. So, yeah. you know, a big shout out to all of you guys. You guys are putting on a show like this and exposing fans to your audience. I know you guys have a big following, so it's fucking awesome. Absolutely, that, <laughs> this, we like to talk to bands. It's it's fun. It's, we well, I mean, I, I I started up. You know, this whole persona came up in, in playing in a band. I, I could never get a band to stick because. It seemed like every time we'd end up, you know, starting to go somewhere, we'd end up have two, three of members that had real bad drug problems, alcohol problems, and just couldn't keep it together. And I was like, you know what? I still want to be in music. And I ended up falling into this. And I'm like, and I start hosting heavy metal and hard rock shows. And I'm like, that's perfect. I'm still within the metal community. I'm still within it. I'm just shifting my view instead of, me pushing my band, I'm pushing them. That's fucking awesome, dude. And, and you know, at the end of the day, I mean, yeah, we've dealt with uh, we've dealt with issues with people having addiction problems and whatnot. We're a fucking party band. We love to drink, and fucking do crazy shit. But at the end of the day, you have to remember that the band you have to keep it together and put on a show, be professional, and all that. So, uh, what 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 kind of instrument do you play? Bass. Bass. So, yeah. do you play any guitar or do drums and all that or? Um, I, I could, I, I can't play like a full kit. I played water drums for a band a while back. Um, nice. I was okay with that, but most of the time I just pretty much focused on playing bass. That's fucking awesome, dude. Like, bass players are hard, especially good bass players, hard to find, so. Yeah. Uh, you know, but 
But what, I, what I've always said to people, like that when you were asking about advice earlier too, is that you're a musician, and it's hard. A lot of times it's hard to find a drummer, or it's hard to find a guitar player. Sometimes you're just, you want to write music, and you're tired of dealing with the fucking people coming in and out. Sometimes you just have to find a producer, write the music, put it together, get your vision out there, get your album, keep the rights, and keep the music and the name and all that together. That way, if you have to get rid of members, because they will come and they'll go, at least you don't have to start from scratch, and you have your music out there. Yeah. That's kind of how I got the American, got the American overdose. You know, I had been in numerous bands previously, and it was a nightmare finding dedicated musicians and people that wanted to do this more than just the weekend work shit. So, oh yeah, oh yeah. I, hats off to hats off to people like you that have had to deal with the shit like dealing with musicians that you have to get rid of and whatnot. By the way, that's a killer fucking mouth. I got to compliment that. <laughs> thank, thank you, thank you. you. Did you make that yourself, or did you? Uh, did you have to no, this is custom made by a guy named uh, Tony Buck. Um, he owns Tony Buck Effects. He does all my faces for me. It's it's got some pieces to it. It's fucking crazy because I'm looking at the mask and it almost looks like you're just rolling slime underneath. The chin yeah. and just, it's trippy <laughs> as fuck. And I love the nose. It's real spiral thing. It's fucking. It's creepy as shit. Oh yeah, and it's I could awesome, take I it off. I have my most recent mask here, but fucking, I gotta fix it. It's got the, uh, this is the last one that I've used on the tour. Sweet. But, uh, but one of our last shows, the, the side of it right here got ripped. Oh, no. So oh, shit. I'm gonna have to, like, figure out how to get this, this back together. If not, I'm gonna get a new mask made. You're rocking too hard. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, well, it got put in the back of a vehicle, and uh, I think somehow I got maybe uh, hooked on one of the, one of my t-shirts that I have for my stage show, or my stage, uh, stage clothes. Yeah. And I think the hook just got inside the ear and it's ripped it completely because it's it's it got completely uh torn up. So I've been kind of putting together with super glue, but we'll see if it lasts. <laughs> I, I needed a new mask anyways, you know, like I, I love this mask, but this one was a little bit too big for my head. And yeah. how weird that is because I have a huge fucking head. Uh the mask was still like slipping off me and fucking when we were on the tour and shit, I get stuck uh soaked in with the sweat inside and by the time I took it off it just literally would just pull off and I just had a pool of sweat coming down my face and whatnot so oh, we, 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 <laughs> we know, know that. all about that I'm gonna, get, like, I'm gonna have to get measured like completely get a cast for my next my next mask so that's a good idea. I know the the last, you know, there's been times where we've went out to shows like uh I think last October on our tour, we went and did Rock and Shock Music Festival for 3 days and we were in this shit for like 12 to 14 hours a day for three days straight. Damn, dude. I, don't, I, yeah, that, I think the worst, the worst beating I've ever taken um, uh, for a live show was at Rockfest because we had to do three different sets and they were literally within like 45 minutes to an hour from each other. Mm. And it's, it's July. You're at a festival with over 100,000 people. And mm. I, was, I was already really sick. We had been drinking a lot the night before and I was from <laughs> over hell. And I got a uh, heat stroke pretty much. I, I was like, I thought I was going to die. And <laughs> going up on stage, it was even hotter with the mass and everything. I was drenched in sweat by the first set. And then they're like, yeah, you're going to be back up here in 45 minutes. Got a new, got a different shirt on. I put on a different mask and all that. And, but I was still covered in sweat. Like the shower, obviously. There, But uh, pulled off the second set. And then the third set, we had to play for an hour and a half. That was just brutal. I thought I was going to die, but... We got through it, and it made me realize that if I can get through that shit, then I can get through the through the worst of worse. <laughs> Hell yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! We we know exactly how it is, you know, from because we do so much stuff. We do everything from you know hosting hard rock shows to going and guest acting at haunted houses, and we could be in those flaming haunted houses in the middle of October, especially like when we go down south in October. It's still eighty, ninety degrees. And then you're inside of this haunted house, which is now like a hundred and something degrees in there, and you got full gear on, face paint, and you're just like pouring sweat, but you got to keep performing and not break character for anybody all night long, oh, yeah. person at the person. Yeah, and the worst thing about like being out there is the humidity. Like out here yeah. in Oregon, we get lucky; we don't have humidity. Like if it's hot, it's just dry. It's a dry heat, but. Out there in the Midwest, man, I don't know how people survive out there. It's fucking just, I can't handle it. Like, the minute I step out of the shower, it feels like I need another shower. Just with all the fucking humidity, especially in <laughs> Showers on showers. Oh, yeah, that's like being yeah, down I, there in Florida. I, I, I think on this last time that, uh, I think the next time that we go out and, and go out in the Midwest, 
Midwest and whatnot, we should probably do it either in the, the spring or the fall, just because it seemed like this last time we went out there, everyone kept telling us that people like the outdoor festival wanted like yep. indoors in the summertime out there. So, you know, it's, it's tougher to get a crowd into an indoor venue versus when all the festivals are going on out there in the outdoors and what happened. I mean, well, you you know what? I, I like I like both for, for different reasons. Like, I love the outside festivals of just being to be outside in the element, and they're normally bigger crowds and, and all that. But then there's also something good about those small venues because I feel like it's more intimate. You can kind of go out there and hang out with the crowd a lot more. You can meet a lot more of your fans. It's, it's not as rough as doing those festivals because doing those festivals – you don't really get to meet and spend the time with fans that you generally could if you're doing, per se, like a show at a bar. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's really quick. Like, you get on stage, you get off stage, and fucking it's on to the next band and shit. And, uh, the indoor shows, too, and you always have something more mysterious because it's dark and you have the lights and all that. You're playing in the middle of the day or early in the morning at a festival, you know, like you're, you're exposed to the sunlight and. There is no mystery to it, especially with a band that uses masks or makeup and shit. And oh, so yeah. It, it takes away from that. It's a different kind of energy you have. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I mean, I like both. I, I, usually the sound quality at the outdoor venues sucks. Um, it's not as great as indoors, but uh, I, I, I enjoy doing both. I just like performing. And I've been having withdrawals. We have not played a show since August. And uh, we've had a show offers, but it just, it, right now, it's, it's just the main focus is writing the album. We have a ton of songs. It's just putting it all together and uh, preparing for next year. Hopefully, we, we play a lot of festivals is what we're, the goal is. And then maybe hitting up some shows in between here and here and then. But, uh, yeah, we're in the middle right now of just getting all the songs together, finding the best of the best. We, we may be working with a producer here or there. And uh, just putting out the third album, investing in PR again, and, and I'm, I'm just excited for the whole process. Because the last time that we did it, we worked with the Drone PR. They did an amazing job in the sense of New York, and we got to be on a lot of big, uh, big shows and do a lot of cool things that I never thought I'd do in my life. And so I'm just excited that we learned a lot from that doing it that time to how we're going to do it again next time. We're going to be better prepared, and I think it's going to be just, just like I said, the learning experience. You learn from your mistakes and just perfect the craft. Uh, so our boss wants us to ask you, <laughs> what's your favorite deli meat? What's my favorite deli meat? Yep. <laughs> uh, Every time. It's a tough one. I like, I mean, I like, uh, I'm more of a turkey guy than I am a ham guy. Yes, or, turkey's honest, better. I, yeah, I like turkey more. Um, but I eat a lot of tacos. Like, I, I'm famously known for, that's what I do, is tacos is my thing. So I like carne asada tacos big time, so. <laughs> yes! <laughs> you, you might as well tell him. That's an interesting question to ask. You might as well tell him the story so he uh, understands. The story behind that is our boss uh, got really drunk, and there was, like, what you know, one of those party uh, meat trays that you can get from, like, Walmart. He was downstairs, oh, yeah. drunk out of his mind, just meat hanging out of his mouth and... It, we're on live feed. He's just on live feed, and somebody asked him a question, and he's just letting this deli meat just flop all over the place <laughs> while he's talking. So now we've asked every band we've ever had on the show, we've asked them that question. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I'm not a, yeah, I can't, like, baloney grosses me out just thinking about it. Um, oh, no. Turkey, I'm a turkey guy for sure. I don't feel like baloney constitute as meat. <laughs> It's fake. It's fake meat. You, want, you have to wonder what the fuck's in it. Like, I mean, I like hot dogs and shit, but, uh, you know, I don't ever question when I mean hot dogs. Like, with bologna, it's like, I don't I know, maybe, maybe it's from... I feel like bologna's at the bottom of the hierarchy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it goes, like, deli meat, bologna hot dogs, bologna. Bologna's <laughs> Bologna's on the bottom. Yeah, I didn't... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mm-mm. <laughs> Mm-mm. Might as well just feed that shit to the neighborhood cat and be done with there it. There you go, Yeah. <laughs> Um, so where can they find you? Uh, we're all over social media. So you can find us on Facebook.com slash American Overdose, A-M-E-R-E-K-I-N, an overdose. Uh, we're on Twitter at American, it's about the way I just spelled it, underscore O-D. We're on Instagram. It's just at American Overdose, uh, AmericanOverdose.com. Our merchandise and CDs are available at uh, AmericanOverdose.Bandcamp.com. Uh, we're on YouTube.com slash American Overdose with the number one. 
Uh, we're, we're everywhere. <laughs> we are social media whores for, for sure. So Well, you got to. <laughs> you you got to. <laughs> we we spend all day working on social media. That's that's how it is, man. Like nowadays you have to be on your uh, you have to be on your phone all the time. People ask like, "Oh, you're always on your phone." It's like you have to interact with people. Like if you're an artist, especially an artist like I said earlier that, that, that doesn't have any multi-million dollar record label funding, you have to interact with your people. You have to you have to just build it, build it, build it, build it. And I think a lot of even the, the, the big bands nowadays, the national acts, they're realizing that they're going to be losing crowds and they're going to be losing the attention of people if they don't start interacting with the crowds. Because you'll see these big artists like actually tweeting back and responding to, to fans and whatnot and, and, and posting more of their personal life on there. Because in that day and age now, people are curious. They want to know where the fuck you're hanging out. They want to know what you like to eat. They like, you know, they like that kind of shit. So they want to feel like they're a part of whatever it is that you're involved in. And so that's, that's, that's one of the key things that you have to do nowadays if you're going to be a musician, regardless of what genre of music you're in. Oh, yeah. We, we've always had more respect because, I mean, with as many bands as me and her have, when, you know, bands have asked us to go on tour with them. They like us coming out and interacting, doing sideshow stuff. And, and you know, we, we sit there and watch the bands, and I can't tell you how many countless bands that we've been out there with that the big bands just don't give a shit. Nope. They don't. They don't care because they, I, a lot of the, I, mean, I think a lot of those bands too. When you think about it, is a, a lot of them, especially the, the ones that are still killing it. They were they were in a different uh, they were in a different era. They didn't have to worry about social media as much. And I remember when I was a kid listening to bands like Slipknot and, and Mudvayne and and you know Pantera and whatnot. That it was about uh, you know at that time it was the social media. It was about the mystery. You love not knowing like what these people really like outside of that, that curiosity just drove you nuts. And nowadays with social media, you know, fucking everyone, every artist and, and what have you is kind of exposing their personal lives and all that. Even those bands now, they, they are like Corey Taylor's always on, on social media. Yeah. And, you know, it's back at fans. And I think that's fucking awesome. That's really cool. So, um, it was a different time that there, you know, a lot of those bands were in and then, the, you know, it's just got to roll the times. <laughs> Yep, definitely, definitely. Well, we know we know you got shit to do tonight. We greatly, greatly appreciate you coming on with us. Dude, I really appreciate you guys having us on here and, and you know exposing us to your crowd and, and what have you. So I hope to God that someday we get to meet you guys and fucking yeah. come to a show. We'll be backstage hanging out and fucking making laughs and fucking hanging out, man. I, I, I would really love to meet you guys. God, oh, I yeah. hope so. We would love to. <laughs> again, thanks a lot for having us and us. Absolutely, yeah, thank man. you for coming on. Sorry it took <laughs> forever. We finally oh, got it figured out, though. Totally We've had them in our live shows, and, and I know it happened, so fuck, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we figured uh, it out. All right, Cody, thank you much, brother. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Cody. 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 Thanks, Thanks, Cody. 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 Thanks,
um, we know that very well that it takes money to make money, unfortunately. So yeah. um, when you guys buy merch from a band, a lo you know, a band like them that don't have um, a record, you know, a record label um, like us, we don't have a manager. Um, anything you buy, CDs, T-shirts, um, any of their merch, that goes that goes back to them to help them bring you better stuff. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, we are going to kick it with them <laughs> yes. at some point. Uh, at we some point, we'll meet, them, yeah. we'll meet them out on the road at some point. Yes, support great, great, support great, great, great bands. <laughs> she likes great bands. <laughs> just great, just the grape ones. Don't support the orange flavor ones. Great bands. Support great what if, bands. What if they're raisins? Support raisin bands. Support the scene, yes. Absolutely, especially uh, people that are like um, Cody. He's very down to earth for yeah. um, as big of a fan base as they have. Um, it's very rare anymore, like he was saying, to find um, people that are like down, down to earth anymore. Uh, everyone's like, "Oh, I got you know a million followers on Facebook, so fuck it, yeah." But uh, yeah, he's not. He's he's chill. Yeah, I love that dude. He's an awesome fucking dude. I am a huge fan of the California Raisins. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said that. <laughs> I can't believe. Well, yeah, anybody that's around there, you know, early to mid thirties remembers the California Raisins. <laughs> you don't know who, what we're talking about, do you? <laughs> of course you don't. Support jelly meat. Now we need a shirt. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> A support deli meat t -shirt. Um, I'm pretty sure we're also making a shirt that says words are hard. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it through the grapevine. <laughs> yeah, but you guys definitely need to go check out American Overdose. They're like I said, I, I can't I can't give any more higher praise. And you know, praise for me, y'all know I'm a I'm a picky motherfucker when it comes to heavy metal. I really am. And uh, I, they, uh, American Overdose is, is in my top favorite bands. They have been for a long time. So trust me, check this shit out. Buy their stuff. Support their music. Yeah, for real. Check them out. Um, they are on um, Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Music. Norman, you can find them on Facebook. You can they're find them on tagged. Instagram. They're also tagged. In the they are tagged and everything. Uh, Why they're is on the Spotify. So now? I don't know. We're playing them on Spotify right now. Maybe they were uh, fucking up there. Uh, it's a bass. I play bass, but I'll bring it. If it's not here. <laughs> I'll make a shirt so <laughs> volcanoes suck. Hi, I'm Cherry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Hell yeah, Susie. That's awesome. Yeah, they're dope. Uh, we love them. All right, for about the last 15 minutes, we'll do a little Q&A. If you got questions for us, if you're new, go ahead and ask. We're sorry tonight was a clusterfuck. Ha, huh, there's a reason why we call this the Friday Fuckery Show. Yeah, it sucks. We lost a lot of, of viewers. But, you know, it happens. Yep, Whether it's one of 500, we, we still reach new Scoop, people Scoop's going to go time. slap at the base with Blitz. <laughs> They want you to play them a song on the bass sometimes. I might. Well. Oh, well, we might have to go early. Yeah. Uh, phone's dying. So, with that, I guess we're going. So, if you have any questions, you can send them to the Scurry Face inbox or the Scoops of Clown inbox, and we will be happy to answer them for you. Um, make, go show some love to American Overdose, please, and thank you. We would much appreciate it. And we'll see you on... Sunday!